This may be a little car, in fact it's tiny. It might be one of the smallest cars we've ever restored because it's definitely one of the hardest. This could be one of the best fit 126s in the world. All right, so this might look just like a really nicely restored Fiat 126, but you'll be very much mistaken. This has had way over a thousand hours worth of restoration put into it. Um, a lot of that is because of the customization that we've done onto it. This is a little bit of a sleeper. The idea with this one was basically to make a Fiat 126 as reliable, as nice to drive and as comfortable as possible, but it's taken an absolute heap of work to get the quality and the standard to this level, that it was never meant to be this good. Plus also, beautiful interior, modern engine, fuel injection, leather interior, nice suspension, better brakes. This thing's got it all. Here we go. New project in the workshop. Now this one's got us all a little bit excited. Fiat 126 BIS. This one, although it's a small car, it does need a lot of work doing to it. Um, we're going to transform the look of this completely. First thing being the colour. We're going to be getting to get rid of this paint. It's an absolutely terrible paint job. This filler underneath here, the silicon dots in it, there's micro blistering. It's all going on. So the first thing to do is to get this thing stripped all the windows out, seals off, plastics off, bumpers off the lot, and get this thing taken back to bare metal. We're gonna do that by hand because we don't want it to dip this, we don't want to get it blasted because we don't want to start taking all the dashboard out, all the wiring, all the rest of it, all the mechanics. So you're gonna be sympathetic with this one. Uh, sympathetic restoration, I guess you could call it. Take this back to bare metal, get into epoxy primer and see exactly how much metal work and which bodywork we've got to do on this. Interiors are also gonna get done. We're going retro custom look with this. So we might also be lowering it a little bit, probably keeping the steel, steel wheels. Um, engine, also that's a big, big change on this one to keep the reliability there at the moment. These engines, the old 700cc water-cooled engines, super unreliable. So we're gonna be putting a more modern engine in it as well. So literally turn the key and drive anywhere you want. Perfect little town car. So with this one, you can see the seats are ripped. The carpet needs doing, there's bits missing. So, first thing to do is get the cowling for that. Sort all these cables out, new stereo. Um, just a small stereo, it's a small car. It doesn't need a massive base box in the boot or anything like that. But we're going for quality. The dashboard, that's going to get re-trimmed. Really Retrim the seats. Um, it'd be nice to put new seats in it, but it's also nice to keep some originality about this car. So we're gonna be retrimming these seats, retrim the back to match, new headliner, new carpet set, and a few little custom touches, new gear knob, um, a few little changes on the console down here because you've got the choke, which we won't need anymore with the engine conversion that we're gonna be doing as well, new mats, and also a door pull, because on these, you literally have to pull the door pocket, which literally pulls the door pocket off the door which wasn't the greatest uh, idea ever. So this thing inside looked absolutely beautiful, nice leather, nice retro custom touch, load of sound deadening as well, because this thing's like a little tin can. Right, so if you don't know much about the Fiat 126, the engine is actually in the back. Now, well, something else we gotta do, get rid of that wiper. And there's a little bit of metal work across the back. We've gotta get rid of the wiper, literally, so we can make a nice new leather clad panel for there, because that looks ugly. Anyway, before we get into that, the engine. Now these engines are standard, are oh, pretty rubbish. It's 700 cc, no power in it, they overheat, they're rubbish to tune up and all the rest of it. It's just not worth spending the money on that one. So what we've decided to do is an engine conversion which has been done a lot in the past, mainly in Poland where these are really, really popular, is a Fiat Uno 1.2 liter engine conversion. Now it'll give us 70 brake horsepower. It is a lot of work, but also, it sits higher than this one will. This is a tiny little engine. It will sit up here, around there. So we're gonna to have to redo all the metal work. Hopefully, keep it looking very similar to this. Similar setup, which is the plan at the moment. And also keep it underneath the standard parcel shelf. So from the outside, and from the inside, it just looks bog standard. But first thing, before we get into that, is to get this thing completely stripped out to a bare shell. Right, so it's time to start stripping the paint off this thing. Now, 
With the big rest, those will either get them stripped back to a bare shell, everything off and get them acid dipped or media blasted. But with this one, we want to keep all the wiring in there. We don't want a full strip down. So we're going to take this off by hand. And the best way for us is to do that with an angle grinder with a strip and clean wheel on it. So it's time to get very dusty and see what's underneath all this paint. All right, so you can see already there all the layers of paint as we've been going. So you've got the original primer, the blue, and you've got the high build primer, which they put on before the black, but we've got filler. So obviously there's a dent there, which you can feel now. You can also feel that from the inside, to be fair. Hopefully, hopefully, that's the last dent on the roof that we find. But we're gonna find more. It's an old car, it will have had repairs, but hopefully they're minimal. And that just makes our job a hell of a lot quicker and easier when we start the bodywork. All right, that was a lot of dusty work. Um, managed to get all the paint off the Fiat now. That's all in bare metal, and we knew we were gonna find some rust, we always do, but we found more than we wanted. Now, down here on this arch, it's just loads of bad patchwork done to it, and some of it's solid, but then it's next to a load of rust, which was just absolutely full of filler. And the thing is, a lot of the time, it's easier just to get the metal work right than actually try and make that shape out of filler. Um, so, we got that there. This rear arch is really bad. Underneath this masking here, there's plates the whole length of the sill. You can see it's just welded all across the top here. We've got holes just underneath the hinges. There's rust in this front piece here. There's rust on this front lip. That's quite an easy, easy repair to be fair. Also, bottom of the windscreen, both sides that's gone. So that's gonna need a full skim of filler. We're gonna put in a high build epoxy primer on this now. So once we block that out, that'll get a lot of the shimmers out of it, but it'll probably need a full skim of filler anyway. We're not talking a load of filler, just like a skim, just to, just to surface it really, just to get it nice and smooth. Now this needs a few repairs down here. It's gonna need a full skim. And this side, it's pretty much the same as the other one. Front arch, front uh, low windscreen, front arch, that's gone in pretty much the same place. Luckily the hinges, the hinge area on this one's pretty good. The rear arch, it's not as bad as the other side, but it has been plated up pretty badly and that was just full of filler. These holes were all filled over because it used to have big plastics across the sides and it used to have plastic bumpers as well. Um, so all the holes for the plastic bumpers, they were all just filled over. So we're gonna be welding a load of holes up on the back, probably weld up a load of holes as well for all the, um, the badges. So we can deep badge it, make it look a lot smoother than it did do. But luckily for us, you can get complete, genuine rear quarter panels, which are on order, hopefully here tomorrow. So as soon as they're here, we can start cutting this thing up and replace all of this in one genuine big panel, which we'll do the sills. We'll probably end the panel at the front of the sill. We won't do the whole thing because all that is good. It's pointless messing with it. We'll probably end it around here and here, do the joins up there. And so the full panel there, it'll also save us a lot of filler work as well. So hopefully they can go on. We've got two new doors in order. Time to get this thing into high build epoxy to protect all this bare steel, which has already been cleaned off. I built epoxy, block all that back. Now we've been lucky enough to get two new old stock rear quarters and two doors. Now, the doors, we're pretty sure are reproduction, but they seem like really, really good panels, actually. They're heavy, which is always a good sign of a good quality panel, plus the front scuttle panel, which will need to be modified because as has got the vents in the front because it's a water-cooled car. So there's a bit of metal work and modifications to do to that one before I can go in. But first off, we're gonna trial fit the doors, make sure that the new doors fit the original rear quarters to make sure we get all the door gaps correct. And then we can start chopping this thing up. Now, we could put this whole thing in, but we don't need it all. So what we do need is the full sill. So we'll be taking it up right to the front and we'll be joining it around here. Again, all that metal work is still perfect. So it's pointless putting that in. It's work for nothing to be there. 
So what we're going to do is chop it up to there, take all this off, and do about four repair panels with one new old stock panel, which will fit perfectly, we hope. Right, so the first thing that anyone is going to notice on pretty much any car that we restore is the paint work. You know what, the two-tone paint scheme on this, I think it really works. This was a customer's choice. Now, the brief with this car was literally um, beautiful interior, super comfortable, door seals that actually did the job and not let water in, fuel injection, and just super nice to drive. Um, and I think we actually nailed it. Now, one of the things that the customer actually wanted on this with regards to the color, with colors to match his old Pagani Huayra, which is an absolutely amazing supercar or hypercar. Uh, and this color was painted to sample to match his old Pagani. And to be honest with you, I didn't think the two-tone was gonna work when we first talked about it, but actually I think it really works well. We got the steel wheels, they're painted up with the bronze, cut that down the body line, and I think it just works perfectly, to be honest with you. I didn't wanna do it, I just wanted to do one color first. So started from scratch, once it was in bare metal, we found that both rear quarters had had it. They were shot. Luckily, we got two new old stock rear quarters, fitted those, bought two new doors. Now, the problem is the only genuine doors that we could get were the later model doors. We have one piece windows and they don't have the swage line down here as it used to have as standard and the quarters did. So, the rear quarters then needed modifying and we used to have a swage line there we cut that body work to smooth that in to basically make the side of the car the side of the car look a whole lot smoother than it would have done otherwise Sole modification but it, it changes it up a lot now as well as the paintwork that needed a massive amount of work to get it looking perfect the other problem was the old engine was absolutely knackered and along with the gearbox which is when I think it only got like third and fourth gears in it. The main thing I wanted to do was to be able to jump into this car, it be comfortable and it to start first time every time, just drive really nicely. So we started looking and a lot of people put motorbike engines in the back of these and fit Punto engines as well as other ones but we went for the fit Punto engine, 1.4 litre, 8 valve and got it fitted in the back. Now, although this looks really simple now and it looks dead neat and it drives dead nice and turns, it starts on the button, it was a whole heap of work to get it fitting in there and looking as nice as it does. Now, we could have never have known the amount of work this was gonna take. It's been absolutely crazy amount of work, mainly because we wanted to make it look nice. Not only is it a lot of work to get it to fit and take it out and punto and stick it in this because it's not meant to be in there. Yes, we bought an adapter plate, we bought the um, engine uh, mounts and things like that. They all needed modifying to fit in this 126 BIS model. So all that's been modified and also the standard, this engine sits out about this far. We would have had to box all the back around the engine the bumper would not have fitted as well. So what we did was move the gearbox forward, bringing the engine forward and keeping everything tightly tucked inside as much as possible, the standard engine bay, so you can still shut the boot. Nothing on the back looks different than it would have done as standard. So it really is a bit of a sleeper. As standard, when you shut the boot, it looks absolutely bog standard and no one would ever know that this is in it. Right, so one of the things on the ones list when we started this, was just a really nice looking, comfortable interior to sit in. And I think we nailed it with this one. Um, it took us a while because these seats, there's only so much you can do with these standard seats, but we didn't want to change them. We looked at changing them, the car is so small, finding a seat that will actually fit in this car is really difficult. So we worked with the standard seats, which I think we've actually nailed it with this design. Um, again, white tan to match the Bugatti Huayra old interior. Um, so we've gone with the white stitching. Uh, white piping and tan leather, custom stitched door cards um, and speakers. That was another big thing that we, there's just nowhere to put speakers on this. Because we got a one, full one piece window, this actually obviously comes all the way down into the door. So the speakers had to be bought out with speaker rings, bringing it out also in the back as well. Again, there's nowhere for anything in this car, no for speakers, but we punished it, but we managed to put one in, blow punk head unit, looks original, looks retro. It's DAB, 
hands-free Bluetooth head unit. And it's about as modern as you can get inside a 126. Now, the standard steering wheel, everything else has just been renewed, painted inside. Everything has been trimmed. So all where everything would have been painted originally, that's been trimmed to give it a nice cozy feel. Then lastly, the tan dashboard, which really gives the interior that this nice little modern. So we're super happy with how this car has come out. I think it looks absolutely awesome. Super fun little town car, retro, but with a modern engine, modern heart and a modern feel to it. I think we've nailed it. I absolutely love it. So yeah, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you on the next build.